My name is Kat Carrillo. I was in the U.S. Navy and um, I've overcame a lot. It's hard to understand when you go against the statistics of, oh, well, you're a smoker. Oh, you're, you have a history of breast cancer in your family or you have a gene that says, yep, you do have a likelihood of getting that. I had none of that. I had nothing. There was nothing in my history to determine that you're gonna, I was gonna get breast cancer. Just a young 33 year old doing my life and I was in the shower and felt a lump. And I was like, oh, well that's weird. And then I kind of let it go for a month because I was like, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't hurt, it's fine. Well, in the time of a month, month, it went from the size of like maybe a nickel to the size of a walnut. <laughs> and if you've never had a needle this big go straight into your <laughs> nipple without any anesthesia is not the most fun part of your life at all like that was probably one of the worst experiences until later on went through chemo and radiation and all the bad things that come with it including like literally losing every hair off of my body my breast cancer fed off of the female hormones that are in your body i was essentially producing too much so immediately got put on hormone blockers, went into basically full on medically induced menopause. So that's fun having night flashes and all the things that come with that, or hot flashes, I'm sorry. Um, I said, God, like, is this what you want from my life? My husband is drinking himself to death and I can't even taste anything and I look like this and why are you doing this to me? And that was literally probably one of the lowest points in my life because I couldn't understand and I couldn't be strong anymore and I couldn't be proud anymore. And I shut out every hand that was offered to me. I didn't want anyone to know like what was really happening. Not my family, not my friends, not anyone that offered to bring food, not anyone that offered to drive up from San Antonio. I was like, no, no. But you can't really change a whole lot in your life when you're going to chemo every single day um, and you're sitting in a chair for six hours getting poison pumped into your body to save your life. And then after that, you're going to radiation and you know, getting a, a, a burn on this part of your body and then you can't feel that burn. So it's the whole thing, right? So I, th I will honestly really help save my life was the breast cancer community that I connected with in Austin. People who knew exactly what the fuck I was going through. To be able to talk to somebody and say like, I can't taste anything, my bones hurt, my scars hurt, like this is so, the swelling hurts, but also seeing people who were five plus years out was like, okay, there's another side of this. I can come out on the other side. The second time I was diagnosed was a time of my life where I felt that I was finally ready to be even again, because for almost 10 years, I walked around with a lopsided chest. And it was almost 10 years of frustration of never finding a bra that fit right, never finding a shirt that fit right, never finding a bathing suit fit right, and literally breaking down in dressing rooms because you could never find a bra that fits because you have half a breast gone and the other one is still there. So I finally decide, you know what? I'm ready. After all the years of no surgeries and no treatments because you go through a whole lot when you're first getting diagnosed. So I was finally ready to have another surgery that was gonna make me feel good about myself. And when I went in to go see my doctor, my regular follow-up is when we're like, okay, let's do another mammogram. And the mammogram didn't look so good. So then I got diagnosed again in 2016 um, with stage, I wanna say it was like 1B. It was one of the hardest things I've ever been through. Um, but the second time, I wasn't prideful. The second time I learned my lesson and I said, yes, please come see me, please come help me. I cannot do this on my own. Knowing that you could pick up the phone at literally any time of the day and be like, hey sis, like, I'm so nauseous right now and the Imitrol's not healthy. And she's like, yeah, I get it. I get it, drink some Sprite, call me back. And you're like, okay. No one else in the world can relate to that except someone else who's been there. Be patient. If you're not a patient person, learn to be patient. This experience will humble you, but it will also, and it should also give you strength. I would pray that and hope that anybody who goes through this comes out on the other side a better, stronger, more confident person. That's what it did for me. I, the first time it happened, I quit living for other people and quit worrying about what anybody thinks about me. I quit worrying about 
oh, they're going to see my tattoos. Oh, they don't like this kind of music. I dance by myself in a crowded room. I'll go be the first one standing front, front and center at a stage of a music festival, dancing by myself because I just don't care anymore. The biggest takeaway is connecting with others who have been through the same experience. Don't be prideful. And um, it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to be vulnerable, to know that it's okay to cry. It's okay to accept the fact that you're having a really shitty day, but it's going to get better. And it does get better. Be there, let them cry. And just, I really would say, like, I hope it makes someone a better and stronger person because of it. That's all I got. <laughs>